Hi folks, it's Mike here from Blastmins UK and I'm here to talk about the mechanical installation of CNC aluminium cages and push to fit flywheels. I've rolled these videos together a little bit so that uh, you can get a full idea of how these processes work. I'm going to cover the mechanical installation of the Artifact Red cage first uh, and the proper method for the push to fit uh, flywheel um, method uh, later in the video. If you want to just uh, skip ahead to flywheel fitting because you don't have an upgraded cage, then there should be a button up here that I'm now pointing to that will allow you to skip to that uh, time index in the video. So to install your flywheel cage, you're going to need a screwdriver. You're going to need the four screws that come with your um, with your cage, which are shown here on this card. And you're going to need your motor loom um, or, and all your motors. Uh, this is a pre-completed loom because I know what I'm doing. Some people will prefer to fit their motors and then solder them, prefer to solder their, their wires to the back and then run the cabling that way. Uh, that's fine. That's, if that's the way you want to do it, that's okay. I will cover that sort of installation in a separate video. But the most important thing you need to know is which way around your motors are spinning. Okay, because your motors need to sit in the in the cage spinning counterclockwise, i.e. to the left rather than to the right. Okay, so they need to be spinning counterclockwise and the way to do that obviously is to take your motor setup and to run it on a little 6 volt test pack, uh, never use lipos when testing, and just have a feel of the shaft and see which way it's spinning. Some people find it helpful to put a piece of tape on the shaft or, or similar, um, that's up to you. I personally just can go by feel. So um, this is a MOSFET board loom, uh, a test one uh, from where I bolted up the MOSFET. So the switch to be the switch. And there we go. And I know that this motor wants to be the top motor when I'm looking at the cage and being able to. So what you do is you take your your cage. You know this is the input side. This is the output side. And you simply slot the motors in. Now, the wonderful thing about the Artifact cage is it's not pushed to fit. It uses these screws. And this is fantastic news because it means that you can properly secure them down without damaging the cage, without causing any grief. You can just go straight in and screw things in place. And it's frankly amazing. Um, so, as you can hear there, um, that's not terribly happy <laughs> with them being loose like that. I'm just checking to make sure. Just checking to make sure they're still counter rotating properly. So next thing to do then is take a screw. Some people will put a dot of thread lock in here to adhere the uh, to adhere the screws to the motors more permanently. So you simply screw in your screw in your motors like so. Two, three, and then four. And that is nice and tidy. So with your cage all set up with its motors, it's time to fit your flywheels. Now, push to fit flywheels, precision foot push to fit flywheels need to be fitted warm. Uh, and for that, you're gonna need a hairdryer. So what I usually do is I usually pop my um, Cage there, so it's going to be short distance. You should pop a screwdriver in the thing and I turn the heat and I turn the heat source on. I usually do that for about 15 seconds. And I push. Come on, nice and easy. There we go. Okay. So with the so with the first wheel fitted, it's helpful to take the a pair of calipers or a known thickness piece of material. Uh, so this is this is 2.1, okay? And the reason I'm measuring that is so that I can get the same distance when I pop this one on the other side. And the reason for that is, that means that these wheels will be centered, uh, so their concave grooves will be at the same location in this profile here. So when the dart goes through, the dart is pulled through nice and center, nice and balanced, and you get the best possible chance of a decent shot downrange. These little tips and tricks, they take time, but it's worth doing if you're gonna build yourself a blaster that's worth the time. I hold my flywheels like so, because they get, they blow all over the place. So 
See? So hold them in place. So I've just measured that and that is 2.2. The bottom one is 2.2 and the top one is 2.1. If you can get them to sit closer together, the better. As I say, the more consistency. It's time to fit it to your blaster. Quite commonly, you'll just drop this straight into a strife. There's a little bit of grinding that needs to be done for the rapid strike. But generally speaking, you can just simply pop everything in. that, like so. Right, so now you, right, so now with all that screwed in place, you can run the wires through the wiring channel to the back where you'll have done your electrical installation earlier on, uh, or you'll be about to do your electrical installation depending on how you approach the situation. Right, so that is your flywheel cage fitted to your blast. So with everything now installed, uh, it's time just to give it a quick run on the test pack, just to make sure that the motors are all spinning and everything's happy. You hear that spin up time from the test pack is quite impressive. Uh, one of the key caveats to remember is that don't push these too far on because they will stick particularly on lower torque motors. So the artifact cage and the worker flywheels can be had from our web store. The links are in the description below. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to drop us an email. That is also in the link below. Uh, thank you for watching.